up everybody, Ty Hansen here, aka Finch Zero, the creator of Millennium Exile. I'm hoping to keep this video kind of short, pretty brief, fingers crossed. Uh, first of all though, before we jump into what this video is about, I just wanted to take a moment to apologise if I sound a little bit off. I'm not really the most attractive man on camera, I'm not actually a really attractive man, full stop, but uh, especially on camera, but on top of all of that, uh, my voice may seem a little bit off, mainly because I've been battling uh, a really, really nasty fever over the last two weeks. It really sat me on my ass. It really put me back. Nevertheless, I really wanted to make this video. Today's the best health that I've had in the last two weeks. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fresh. And I have some awesome artwork to share with you and to show you. So... As we jump into it, this video is basically just going to be sharing a very, very key piece of artwork to the Millennium Exile piece. On top of that, we're also going to be doing a bit of a breakdown over what's happened over the last uh, over the last 12 months for 2017 with the project and with myself personally. And let's uh, we might look into where 2018 is hoping to bring us. So let's just jump into it. <clears throat> oh my God, I'm dying. Now, as we can see here, this piece of imagery, this masterpiece, this spectacular piece of eye candy is, of course, the cover art to the Millennium Exile art book that I'm going to be making. This was, of course, drawn by the master himself, the man of all artists, the king of the Wacom tablet, Harry. Uh, now, many of you would know Harry from my project already. Uh, many of you would, would also follow him already. I certainly hope that you do. He's absolutely worth the time and worth the watch. Uh, this man has been with the Millennium Exile Project and drawing for me since its creation, since its conception back in 2009, I believe, Harry started drawing for me. So it's, it, we're getting on in years now. And not only that, but Harry has not just... Uh, been a very, very great artist to work with and, to, and to, to have on the project, but he's also become one of my closest friends. And oddly enough, we've still never met face to face. Anyways, all that aside, what we're seeing here is a very, very loud piece. There's a lot going on here. So as you can see here, uh, in, in the center here, you're seeing Vincent Klein in all of his glory doing a, almost like a signature sort of a power up move. Uh, he is surrounded by a bit of a pinkish, purplish glow to just give off some of that energy. We really need him to stand out in the forefront, to bring him right into the middle of all the action there, and to really keep that eye attracted to him no matter what, uh, wait, no matter what else is going on in this image. And we know that there's so much going on, so we really want that eye coming back to Vincent as our main character. Then on his immediate right, you've got Agato wielding, obviously, his crystal there, you know, using his elements of fire and lightning. Next to him, off to the left, we've got Zero. Now, Zero is sporting the one pistol instead of the twin pistols that he's usually holding, but he's also showing his his partial unlock, uh, his partial overdrive ability, which is the Ragnarok wires. Off behind Zero at the far left there, we've got Kyo sporting his original Bastard Cutter blade, which is, of course, the Gravity Manipulation Blade. It's the first weapon we see Kyo using, and it is, of course, the blade that he has to use, because while Kyo's personality is present, uh, he cannot utilize the Raven Blade that, that Lan wields. Speaking of Lan, dart on over to the other side of the picture, to the far right there, up behind Agato, and you've got the man himself, the Master Swordsman of all Master Swordsmen. He's there in a classic sort of Kenshin-esque pose, getting ready to draw his blade with absolute speed and accuracy. Behind them all there, in a, in a pose very, very similar and very intentionally similar to Vincent's, is the Nightmare Armor. Now, this Nightmare Armor that you're seeing here is actually Vincent. This is what Vincent looks like when he covers himself in a, an armor made of the Wrath, and it's called his Nightmare Form. We've got it there looking really menacing, really maniacal. I really wanted to pay homage to my favorite anime of all time, Gurren Lagann, uh, which we've got a couple of drill bits there anyway, but it's just a slight nod. But on top of that, the man does utilize an array of weird drills and spikes and, and blades and, and, and things of that nature. So we really just wanted to incorporate some of that there. And then up the very back with his arms crossed in another little tilt of the hat to Gurren Lagann, we've got the Pantheon Armor Genesis. 
Now, the Pantheon Armor Genesis is one of the two main mechas throughout the Millennium Exile story, and they do not come into the story until about the later half of, of, of everything. It's a very, very crucial part to the story. It plays an integral role in the lore and history of the world. And yeah, we've really just got just some elements of shadowing there, just, just to cover him up, make him a little bit more mysterious. Well, still not, you know, trying to take the eye away from everything else that's in the foreground, but we still want to show off that awesomeness. So that's basically the image there, guys. Harry absolutely knocked it out of the park. I did make a few compositional changes, but that's me. I always do that to every single image I get. Well, almost every single image that I get. I always have to make a few little tweaks and a little changes here and there, but Harry absolutely knocked this out of the park. Thank you so much, Harry. Uh, I cannot recommend this guy enough. If he is open for commissions and you are interested in getting something drawn, by all means, absolutely hit this man up. I cannot recommend him enough, as I just mentioned. And it's not just anime-styled stuff. This guy can draw almost anything. This man's talent is com completely unlimited. So hit him up if you get the chance, guys. Go show him some love. So, okay, that image aside, all that other nonsense aside, uh... 2017 is nearing an end uh, for, well, all of us, and it has been an absolute, it's been a hectic year uh, for both myself personally, but especially the Millennium Exile project. Now, as many of you would already know, the Millennium Exile demo reel has already been professionally dubbed by real anime voice actors from the United States. I can't legally go into exactly who they are, but if you are watching this video, guys, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. Uh, it was an absolute honor to work with all of you, and uh, here's to hopefully working with you all again very shortly if Millennium Exile makes it into an actual thing. But, that being said, the demo reel dubbing was not completed in 2017. It was actually done about a year and a half ago, and it's almost two years. And it's been extremely hard to chase th that success into 2017, having already had such amazing experiences like that. It's been very, very hard to keep kicking that ball higher and higher to keep shattering higher ceilings than that because it was such an absolute honor to work with these, uh, these talented men and women of the, of the anime industry. But at the end of the day, this year really surprised me. It was an absolutely phenomenal year. Uh, I have so many people to thank and maybe I should just take that moment to, to do this now. Uh, this was an absolutely phenomenal year. Pardon me, guys, I'm just trying to get this list up. My phone's playing funny buggers. This was an absolutely phenomenal year for donations and contributions from the public. And although not all of these donations came through this year, I am going to read the list in its entirety, and that's kind of what I have here, because, uh, again, I don't have a script, and there's no way I can remember all these names anyway. P.S. If I butcher someone's names, be it first or last names, Please, my most sincerest apologies, but here we go anyway. <clears throat> I would like to thank Kelsey Ellis, Kylie Keane, Ty Pryor, Joshua Mayer, Irina McCat, or, yep, uh, yeah, sorry, Irina McCat, Daniel Cook, Aaron Fern, John Boz, uh, Bose, uh, Sharon Corkery, Damien Sheridan, <laughs> Damon Sheridan, sorry, Damon, man, I butchered your name and you're a good mate of mine. Shit, sorry, man. Uh, Asma Bill, Bill, Bill oh, I'm not even going to try that. Asma, you know who you are, man. You're a fan of the show. Thank you so much. Nathan Mark Collins, uh, Paul Nealis, James Usher, David Gaffey, Robert Correa, John Collins, Mark Serrano, Crutchley, Jessica Ann Raptor, James Salahani, David Haynes, Cohen Olsen, Armin Mohovic. Uh, James Bates, oh, well, James Bates, Wayne Bates, sorry, Wayne, I'm, I'm butchering, I'm butchering all the guys I actually know, but this, this list keeps going. So, Wayne Bates, Victor Chan, Tristan Woodington, and Dan Tucker Keeley. Special shout out to Zompster, uh, but I am, I am going to circle back around to those guys, but they were in this list. Mm, we good. On to page two. Um, I also want to thank Brett Kyra and Cameron Walsh for their musical contributions to uh, the Money Exile Project, you guys are phenomenal, and all of the artists that have worked for Millennium Exile and worked with me on Millennium Exile since it all started. Guys, you guys have been absolutely amazing, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Woo! 
it is hot in here. Okay, so it is summer here in Australia and our summers go from blistering hot to just destructive thunderstorms that are just, just, just killing everyone. So today is one of uh, the prior, one of the first ones. It is, it is a, it is a scorcher. So I, I am melting here. Plus I've got like a, a light on over there and it is, it is not helping for the heat. But yes, uh, anyways, back on track. Everyone who donated to the project, thank you. Absolutely thank you. You guys have parted ways with your own hard-earned money to support a project such as mine. Now, that money does go a long way, especially in terms of paying for artwork and so on and so forth, but it also has a double value and it's, it's almost more valuable than the money itself. And that is that because you guys have donated, your name is now part of that art book and gets listed in the art book as a contributor to the project. And as you know, or well maybe as you don't know, but I'll tell you anyway, when a studio looks at this kind of stuff, it is going to be massive. It is going to mean so much to a, to, to a wide range of studios to be able to see that other people other than myself have parted with their own hard earned money when they stand to gain nothing from it. You guys have supported me because you believe in me and you believe in the project and you want to see this made as an anime. And that's a very touching thing to me. It's very near and dear to my heart. So again, thank you so, so very much. As well as uh, all the contributions that were made, 2017 has been a big year for me personally and for the project in terms of events and, and venues that I've gone to. Uh, myself personally, for the last few years now, I've actually been doing, uh, I teach uh, anime classes, anime 101 classes to a variety of different high schools and primary schools here in Queensland in Australia. And I do it not because I'm an animation pro myself, I don't work in the industry, but because I have a very intimate knowledge of anime, of the industry, of how it's made, how much, it's cost, how much it costs to get made. And being that I've got a lot of fans here in, uh, here in Queensland, Australia of the Millennium Exile Project, a lot of kids want to know how I got started with what I'm doing and how I do it. So I've been very, very blessed and very honored to be invited to a lot of these schools to teach the kids a day of anime. So uh, 2017 has been an absolute blast for that. I know I mentioned that I've been doing this for a few years now and I have. It's been five years at one particular school where it all started, Rabina High School. You guys are the best and the most amazing uh, faculty of teachers and, 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 and body of students that I've ever come into contact with. That being said, um, 2017, yeah, it's been a massive year because I've now expanded into other schools and to all the schools that have had me in their, within their premises teaching these kids. Thank you. You guys have been amazing. The kids have been amazing. And it's been so inspiring to see all the fresh faces out there with you know, the dreams still embedded so firmly in them, you know, they're in school, life hasn't crushed them, you know, just yet, life hasn't gotten them down yet, and it's important for them to, to hear a story of, of hope and a story of, you know, never give up, work hard and, and, and never give up, you know, just because something's improbable doesn't make it impossible, and I think that's an important message for these kids to get, so... It's been amazing to share uh, my own personal story and the Millennium Exile project with schools around my own state. So I'm very, very grateful for that. Now, I know I mentioned earlier that I was gonna circle back around to a special company by the name of Zomster. So for those of you who don't know who Zomster is, Zomster is a local business in my area who is an anime merchandise distributor. They sell DVDs, manga, gunpla models, you know, plushies, figures, statues, the lot. They, they're an absolute awesome store. I, they, they, we need to have more of them out there, but at the same time, I kind of don't want there more to be out there because I, I, I don't want more competition for these guys. But what I'm saying is there, there needs to be more people out there that are willing to open up these kind of shops that people are going to be so passionate about. Uh, Alistair, uh, Alistair and Karen have been absolute amazing people and they did something phenomenal for the project and that was one of Australia's biggest conventions for anime, gaming and pop culture is called the Supernova Convention and when it came to Brisbane I was sponsored by them to appear at their booth and to showcase Millennium Exile to the public 
There's, I believe there was a count of over 50,000 people going throughout the course of the Friday afternoon, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, I think those extra numbers were really boosted by it being Stan Lee's last appearance here in Australia. Um, but I really got to put Millennium Exile out into the public for the very first time, you know, outside of just the internet. It was the first time I actually got to show people, physical people, you know, aside from the, the days when I go and see kids. And uh, it was amazing. It was absolutely incredible. I, I'm still a nobody at this current point in time. I've gotten further than a lot of people in my position and from my background. Uh, with this kind of project, you know, uh, an Australian bloke trying to make an anime. It hasn't happened yet, but I haven't taken it to get pitched yet. Uh, that being said, considering the amount of support that I've been, that, I've, that that's, the project has generated, the amount of people that are behind the project and supporting it, um, the, the professional dubbing, the, 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 all the right people that have been getting involved and, and helping me behind the scenes. I've definitely gotten further than a lot of people in my situation and that's not me trying to puff myself up that's me trying to humbly say that like even though I've gotten that far there's still a lot more work to go and my chances are always going to be infinitely closer to zero than 100 of getting things made uh, the, the creation the, the creative industry especially in anime for an Aussie it's 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 going to be near impossible but there's no reason not to continue on with that because it is my dream and I want to see a collaboration between countries. Anyways, uh, being a nobody, being just this guy that's creating something still uh, here in Australia, I wasn't expecting to get a very big turnout and it was, <clears throat> it was, it was humbling to say the least, but it was absolutely incredible. Uh, it was shocking. It was a very emotional weekend. I, I went through over 600 prints uh, in a day and a half of being at the convention. I made a lot of new friends there as well as catching up with some old friends and running into some familiar faces. Uh, the, the weekend was an absolute blast. I mean, I was so sore by the end of it. I was definitely ready to take a couple of days off and kick my feet up by the end of it all. But I, I, it was just an irreplaceable uh, experience and I cannot thank Zomster enough for their contribution to bringing me out there and I mean it would not have, it absolutely would not have been possible without them so a massive thank you guys again and from the bottom of my heart you guys absolutely rock. And last but certainly not least, uh, the Mighty Megzile Project and myself were also lucky and blessed enough to be featured in quite a few magazine articles from around the world. Uh, it was a, an amazing experience. I think it was about four interviews in total that I got featured in with the project, uh, both in online publications and even the printed, uh, the printed media format. I mean, <clears throat> Neo Magazine, you guys are awesome. Uh, I've been a big fan of your magazine for the longest time and to be graced in your pages was an absolute honor. The best in Western talent, I wouldn't quite say that that's a true title for me. I absolutely didn't choose that title, but it was flattering nonetheless. I'm sure they say that about all their white boys. But um, it was an honor to be in the pages of such an awesome publication. And I do believe that I'm getting featured in another story from a very, very prominent anime, pop culture and gaming uh, news website very shortly, but I can't talk too much about that just yet. And I'm not sure if it's going to come out before the end of this year or the start of 2018, which could be very, very good for us. Speaking of which, where does Millennium Exile plan on going in 2018 and what's the current status of the project? Well, look, in its current status, we have <coughs> quite a lot of artwork still to go. Um, I've still got quite a lot of uh, artwork from the art book missing. But that being said, I've made some new friends with some new artists, one of which is the amazingly talented Niku Senpai, who runs a live stream of all of his art on Twitch. I will put a link to his channel down, in, uh, down below down there somewhere. Make sure you go and check him out. This dude can draw for days. He is insane. Uh, and he has just been an absolute asset to the Millennium Exile team of artists, so um, big props to him. 
But uh, I still have quite a lot of demo reel artwork to complete and still a lot of characters to still release into the public for uh, the art book itself. So will I be ready next year to present to studios? Probably not. But that being said, if a studio was to approach me, you know, from word of mouth or whatever, I certainly wouldn't say no to them, uh, you know, if they were interested in hearing about it. But I have got a lot completed. 2017 has been a fantastic year of growth for both myself and the project. I really want to say thank you to all my friends, family and loved ones. You guys have been an absolute pillar of strength and support. I can't thank you all enough. And to you, all of the fans, you guys rock. Uh, I couldn't do this without you. I'm really sorry that I neglect this YouTube channel, but truth is, I just don't know what kind of videos to be making for the project. Uh, but I figured a, a 2017 wrap-up video would be good. Anyways, guys, that's it for me today. Here's to a fresh 2018 full of surprises, full of adventures, and here's hoping for an anime adaptation super soon. Thanks very much. Take care.